Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. Today we're going to be doing a review and full day wear test of the new Fenty Eavesdrop Blur and Smooth Tint Stick. So before we get into it, I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel before you leave. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy, and let's get into it. Alright, so this is the new Fenty Eavesdrop Blur and Smooth Tint Stick. This is available now at Sephora. This retails for $35 US dollars or $47.50 Canadian. This does have a 12 month shelf life and is made in Italy. This is supposed to be a light coverage long wear tint stick with a creamy smooth texture that instantly blurs while melting into the skin for a natural finish. And this is supposed to be a crease proof formula, delivers a blurred smooth second skin finish that resists fading and transferring. Easy to use, the stick helps with all day hydration and contains color true pigments that resist oxidation. Plus, it's 100% recyclable, so that's great to know. Picking out a shade for this one was interesting. I will pop up the photo they have on Sephora. So I picked up shade one. I almost went for shade two, but they compared this shade range to their Pro Filter shade range, and this allegedly covers the first five shades in their Pro Filter line. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Let's take a look at the package. So it just looks like this really pretty. It's got this kind of transparent gradient going on with a little bit of a beige base. It has some gold detailing and just has Fenty down the front. I think it's because it's made to be recyclable, but the packaging itself feels very inexpensive. It just feels incredibly lightweight. If I compare it to the Pat McGrath blush sticks, I had the exact same complaint and they feel very similar in the hand. So I will say that the packaging isn't the most luxurious, but I think that may have been in an attempt to make it recyclable. This is what it looks like. And you just pull off the cap and it's got like a little protector up here and it is just a twist up. So this does come with nine grams of product and has 0.32 ounces. This does say when you hit the bottom, like this, you can keep twisting and you will get a lot more product out. So as with all of my full day wear tests, I will be priming and powdering one side of my face and not the other, and then wearing this for about 10 or 12 hours. I'll see how long I can make it, and then we'll check in at the end of the day and I will let you know my overall thoughts. Popping off the cap and then just twisting up, the shade looks pretty good. Looks very fair. I'm hoping that because it is Ooh, it looks really light. So before I looked at the chart, I almost ordered shade two because shade one says light with cool neutral undertones. Shade two is light with neutral undertones. So I almost went with that, but this is looking pretty light. So we're gonna have to see. It does say on the website that you can either draw it directly on the face and then blend, or you can take it off the brush for more coverage. So let's pin the hair back. I have already primed this side with the One Size Secure the Blur Primer that I'm trying to use up. So I think with this product, I wanna use my BK Beauty 101 brush. And I think on this side, I will try drawing it directly on the skin. On this side, I will try just taking it off with a brush. This side does require a bit more coverage, so I think that will be a good idea. Put this on. Oof, it's looking really light. Okay, and let's blend. I will say I have been looking for a good stick foundation for a while. I do like the convenience of a stick, but I find being somebody with dry skin, it's really hard to find a stick foundation that works with my skin type, that doesn't dry me out, that doesn't cling to dry patches, things like that. And it's been really, really hard to find a good one. Okay, so that did blend out quickly. It did sort of blend into my skin tone, which is good. My skin really doesn't feel too tacky. You can tell there's product there. It's not drying down like a soft matte, but you can tell there is product there. Let me try to add a bit more coverage in here. I just wanna see. It does feel nice on the skin. It feels very creamy. And like you can see, it does blend out very quickly. I do think the shade still is very, very light, but it does seem to be blending in with my skin tone reasonably well. I have also never tried the original liquid ease drops. I only got into more skin tints this past year, so I 
have never tried that one let me know down below if you have and would you recommend i've heard both good and bad things so let me know okay first impression i'm not getting a ton of coverage but it is looking pretty nice i do think it's definitely evened out my skin tone it blended out very quickly and it does not feel at all heavy it does have a slight tack to it but nothing crazy so far i'm okay let's try taking it directly off the stick and see what happens if I like this, I can see myself going through this fairly quickly. That's the only thing. And it is a little bit more affordable than some of the Sephora foundations in my collection, but not by a lot. I'm seeing some pilling over on this side. I'm wondering, that must be with the primer. I don't love that, but I did not have that issue over here, so I think it has to be an issue with the primer. I'm just gonna stipple this into the skin, see if that helps. Okay, I am finding I am getting a lot more coverage by taking it directly off the brush. So I am just going to add a little bit more to this side. And I think it is looking nice on the skin so far. My one complaint, which is not even a complaint, is that it really does not like the Secure the Blur Primer from one size. So I'm already not recommending pairing the two. Let me grab my sponge really quickly and see if that works as well. Okay, I definitely got the most coverage with the sponge. Okay, I'm really, really liking it with the sponge. So far, it's looking really nice on the skin. I think I'm going to take my NARS under eye brightener on the under eyes. I do think the shade selection on these sticks is still a little bit weird. While this does work with my skin tone, I do think some people are going to be steered wrong if they are, say, like a 130 and they grab shade 1 and it's far too light. I can definitely see that. This works for me, but I think it's on the verge of being too light. Aside from the shade range though, the product itself seems really, really nice. Okay, I am going to set both under eyes, but I'm only going to powder this side of my face. And I'm just grabbing a slightly larger brush. I'm just using my Dior Powder No Powder, just so I can really especially seal in the areas that needed some extra help. Okay, even with powder, it's looking pretty nice still. The product itself, looking very closely at the skin, I can definitely see a pretty natural finish. It does almost look like it has a very soft matte at first, but I can see a little bit of a glow peeking through over here. Over here, I added powder and it completely mattified everything. It has settled into some smile lines. I do think this is buildable as well, but I think only to a certain point. Like, I don't think you're ever going to get full coverage, but I think you can build it up to be a light medium. So I enjoy that as well. I'm going to pop off camera. I'm going to finish the rest of my makeup and I will be right back to get the wear test started. All right. So the rest of the makeup is on and I'm still thinking it's looking really good. I think everything looks pretty nice. It has settled into some smile lines, things like that, but that's fine. Otherwise, my skin looks really smooth. The side I powdered is definitely a little bit more matte. The side I didn't does have a little bit of a luminosity right in the center, which is also fine. I really like how it feels. It feels incredibly lightweight on the skin. It doesn't feel like I have a full face of makeup. It doesn't feel like too much at all. So I'm really happy with how everything's looking. I think this can be very sheer or buildable to a light medium. I do think the shade really did kind of melt into my skin and kind of match my skin tone. So I'm happy with that as well. I definitely found I got more coverage when I was taking the product directly off the stick with my brush and then just stippling in. That definitely gave me more coverage. So overall, I think this looks really good. I'm really happy with it so far. It is currently 9.30 in the morning, so I'm going to go about the rest of my day. I'm gonna be doing a ton of things, so hopefully we will really test this out, and I will see you guys at the end of the day with my final thoughts. All right, so it is officially 7.30, so this makeup has now been on for a solid 10 hours and I think I'm going to wrap it up because I do want to get this video edited and posted but let's talk about my thoughts. We're definitely starting to get a little bit glowy so my natural oils are popping through which I'm not mad at that. I've lost a lot of coverage on my chin but this side, the side where I primed and powdered still looks really good. So while it is fading after 10 hours 
it's still here and the spots where it faded it did so gracefully so I'm not at all mad at the wear time. I will say the primer and powder really did help with longevity though. So just something to note. I also did not find this at all heavy throughout the day. I think this is a very, very comfortable stick foundation. Again, it has a very skin-like finish, but I was able to build it up to a more light to medium. Uh, the side where I didn't powder and it's starting to come through, I am noticing if I touch those spots that it just tends to come off immediately. So it's definitely not transfer proof. As for the blurring properties, I'm really not sure about those either, to be honest, but I do think it is very lightweight. It has a good wear time to it. It's super comfortable. It gives a nice light to medium coverage. It doesn't cling to any dryness on my dry skin. I'm really, really happy with how my makeup looked today. I was also really happy with how easily this blended out. I thought that was wonderful. And overall, I've just had a really good experience with this. Historically, I haven't had the best experiences with stick foundations because I do have dry skin and they tend to be a little bit stiffer and harder to blend out whereas this one is actually very very creamy so I did appreciate that. What this reminded me of though is the Merit Perfecting Complexion Stick. So this is another stick foundation that is also meant to be a more lighter coverage. So what's different about the Merit is that it is significantly thinner, the packaging is definitely more luxe, but I have spoken very highly about the Merit stick before. I do really really like this one. I think this is phenomenal. This is the first foundation stick that has ever worked for me and I think this is the second. But I just did some swatches. In the Merit I have the shade Silk and the Fenty I had the shade 1. The Merit shade is a better match for me. I will say the Fenty is a little bit creamier, but I think the Merit has a bit better of a wear time. I will say the finish on the skin, the lightweight feel, the blendability, these are very, very similar. So I don't think you would need both of these. As for the Fenty Ease Drop skin tint, I've never tried that one, so unfortunately I can't compare it to this. But overall, I am really, really happy with how everything wore. I think I really, really like this. I really enjoy it. I will definitely continue to get a lot of use out of it, test it and try it out, and give you a final update toward the end of the month. But I think for me, the only things that are important to note is that this really did hate the one size concealer. It really did pill up. And if I don't powder it, when my oils start to come through, it's going to transfer like crazy. And I really don't know about the blurring properties. I really didn't see that myself. Longevity, at least 10 hours for me, was perfect. Blendability, perfect. Um, coverage, it was a really nice light to medium. Very comfortable on the skin, very lightweight. I found it just perfecting enough. I absolutely, absolutely like love this so far. So I will keep testing it out like I said, but overall it's been a very successful day. This wore beautifully for 10 hours on my dry skin. Of course it did wear better on the side where I primed and powdered even with a primer that it did not like. So that is it for me today. Let me know down below if you're picking this one up. Have you already? Are you thinking about it? Let me know. I love hearing from you guys so so much. If you're new here, I hope you'll consider subscribing before you go. I do upload at least three new videos every single week. Thank you again so very much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye!